Um, good morning. So I've been assigned to compliment uh, Brees' presentation in English for our Anglophone audience, for our English-speaking audience. Um, and I want to first say that um, both being a representative of Berkeley, but also EGAP, I want to underscore that EGAP is not just an American organization, but it's an international organization. Our members come from around the world, and this effort of building and establishing a hub in West Africa is to help ensure that our membership will now start to draw more effectively from West Africa, from Cote d'Ivoire, and the rest of the region. So I want to underscore that, because that's the ambition for EGAP to be an international collaborative organization. Um, and it's an organization that's dedicated to using the best methods in the social sciences for advancing our understanding of policies and you know, using the best social scientific methods for better establishing which policies we should be promoting and which policies are not very effective at helping us to achieve our goals, whether it's for democracy or for development or other forms of governance. Um, so I, I also want to say that um, when EGAP's leadership was considering establishing a regional hub in Africa, and specifically in West Africa, SEDAP became a natural partner. Um, SEDAP already has an extensive record collaborating with research partners from Europe, North America, and other parts of the world. Um, it's a gateway for, for the region, for scholars who are working in Cote d'Ivoire and the rest of West Africa. And for myself personally, I would have to say that Sarah has not only been an indispensable partner for my research in Cote d'Ivoire, but the best research partner I have had the pleasure to work with in any of the African countries I've worked with. So, so I, I want to thank Sarah and the institute for being my are an amazing institution here in Cote d'Ivoire. It's a testament for the potential of research here in Cote d'Ivoire. So, why are we creating a, a regional hub? The, the regional hub, as I mentioned, is intended to promote international collaboration. And what's special about the hub is that it's designed to help showcase and invest in the expertise of researchers from the global south. You know, and to help us break out of this model in which foreign researchers parachute into a country, work in isolation, and then leave. And often, local researchers play some secondary role in those projects. And instead, what we're trying to ensure is that local researchers, and especially here in West Africa, that West African researchers play um, a role of intellectual leadership in these projects. Because they often have the real expertise that um, should be informing how we understand the um, impact of policies here. So, what are the uh, strategic objectives? Um, so, as Bruce has mentioned in his own presentation in French, it's intended to support rigorous research that is policy relevant. Um, here again, from personal experience, I can testify that members of the EGAP network provide incredibly useful feedback for helping us to achieve research designs intended to meet the highest standards of causal interest and for informing policy working with policymakers to help make their work better, right? And that's in, that's in the social interest, that's in all of our interests. At the same time, the regional model, the hope is that the regional model will allow West African scholars to set their own research agenda and empower them to collaborate with each other across national boundaries here in West Africa, but also with researchers from outside the region. And that that's, it's in that spirit of collaboration and partnership on equal footing that this model, the hub model, is intended to promote. Okay. Um, and we should emphasize in terms of um, supporting applied research and policy um, that locating the regional hub at SEDA will also help to extend West, to West Africa some of the most important features of the EGAP network. One is the emphasis on supporting research that is policy relevant. And in the case of Sarah's regional hub, there will be programming specifically designed to support research focused on democracy, conflict, and polarization, which are issues that affect not just Cote d'Ivoire, but all, basically all of its communities. Um, 
And the study that will be presented later, um, our own study and Jessica Duffy's uh, study, will serve as examples of the kinds of projects related to conflict and polarization that should be supported here in Cote d'Ivoire and across West Africa. The hub will also play a role in providing opportunities to form partnerships between researchers and government and civil society organizations interested in evaluating the impact of their reforms and the program. And that's something we hope that we can encourage so that we can work collaboratively, not just among scholars, but with, between researchers and policymakers, between researchers and civil society, so that we can achieve progress on our shared goals in terms of promoting democracy and development. So, Okay. In terms of advancing regional scholars, um, EGAP's regional hub at SEDAP also provides West African scholars with mechanisms for becoming an integral part of the global research community. And I know from my role as working as a journal editor that one of the limitations that scholars often have here in Africa and West Africa, especially in Francophone Africa, is gaining access to these global mechanisms so that they could better share their knowledge with the rest of the world. And so that's something that we hope the hub will help to do. And specifically in terms of the learning days that are taking place right now, this is an example of the kind of trainings and workshops that will empower scholars here um, to make their work accessible to the rest of the world. Not only to improve the rigor of their work, but again, to make it accessible um, to the rest of the world. And to date, um, 126 researchers and practitioners from 26 countries have already participated in these learning workshops um, in different countries um, in the last several years. And one other feature that I want to point out is the research grants. That one of the things that EGAP does is it helps to provide funding for local researchers to invest in their work. So again, this gets back to this issue of intellectual leadership, of empowering and providing resources for local researchers to do their own work and to set their agenda by providing them the resources to do exactly that. And finally, to conclude, I want to emphasize that the spirit of EGAP is to promote ongoing learning among all of its members. So the regional hub will sponsor conferences and events aimed at enabling West African researchers to share their knowledge with each other on an ongoing basis. Because again, you know, from my own experience as a journal editor, one of the real limitations that um, scholars in the region often have is that they often don't have opportunities to get feedback um, from their peers in their disciplines about you know, how to improve their work, how to make it more accessible, not just to other scholars that meet international standards, but also to make it accessible to policymakers in their own countries. So it's in this spirit that EGAP's regional hub here at SEDA will soon announce also a new collaborative research initiative to support West African scholars. And I think I will stop there. Thank you.